साईराम विजय लक्ष्मी आंटी और विजय आंटी एज आई कॉल हर हैड अ वेरी स्पेशल एनवीएबल चाइल्डहुड शी ग्रू अप लिटरली विथ स्वामी अराउंड हर विथ हर एंड अबव हर अबव हर बिकॉज देर वॉज अ फर्स्ट फ्लोर ऑल्सो टू देअर होम येस स्वामी वॉज अ फ्रीक्वेंट विजिटर एंड रेसिडेंट ऑफ देअर होम एट कुमारा पार्क इन बैंगलोर शी इज द डॉटर ऑफ मिस्टर श्रीनिवासन and mr shrinivasan and mr venkatraman whom swami would call as vasan venkatraman were among the first hosts of bhagwan in the city of bangalore even before swami had the brindavan ashram swami used to stay at a place called nandanavanam even before nandanavanam swami would stay at the residences of vasan and venkatraman mostly mr shrinivasan in fact mr vasan's home it was planned it was supervised the construction and even the graha pravesham was performed graha pravesham is the house warming ceremony or the inauguration of the home all of that was done by swami himself in 1957 was the graha pravesham all these images are from that graha pravesham in fact the silver adishesha the idol of the snake which is currently in the bhajan hall at prashanti nilayam swami had sent that also for the graha pravesham festivities <laughs> now vijay aunties little sisters have literally grown up on the lap of bhagwan this is a family extremely close to swami mr vasan was like swami's best friend and we can possibly have several videos on that but i digress let me get back to vijay aunty the reason i gave all this background is because such a vijay aunty who literally was with swami all the while receiving hundreds and thousands of pad namaskars lost her connection to swami and this is the story of how she reconnected to swami it's so beautiful it is so touching and it evokes tears in our eyes i'm grateful to vijay aunty for sharing this because apart from filling our hearts with swami it gives all of us one very important insight and clue as to how do we connect to swami this is as relevant to the new devotees as much as it is to the old devotees anybody who is seeking to connect to swami is sure to gain a lot from this video prema swarupulara Lord Krishna says that a devotee can make four offerings to become dear to him and these four offerings are phalam pushpam patram toyam phalam means fruit pushpam is flower patram is leaf and toyam is water we must be grateful to our beloved bhagwan shri sat sai baba for giving us the inner meaning of pushpam phalam patram and toyam Swami says phalam phalam is manofalam vancha phalam karma phalam meaning the fruit of desire the fruit of action the fruit of the mind whenever we do any action we desire a result that desire for that fruit is what has to be given up that is what has to be offered to god what is patram deha patram the leaf of the body and what is pushpam hridaya pushpam the flower of the heart our emotions our feelings all of them must be offered to god and toyam ananda bhashpam swami says the tears of bliss that is the water that has to be offered to god so anybody who makes these offerings become dear to god <laughs> now is it possible to offer all of these yes there is a way and that way is called seva or service we need to understand that whenever we think we are serving others we are actually serving ourselves because service is the surest fastest and most beautiful and blissful way to reconnect with god to connect with god to make god reside in our hearts forever and to make ourselves reside in his heart forever and that is what the story of vijaya aunty tells us cutting a long story short circumstances in life took vijaya aunty to different places 
on the earth and in her heart as well she got married she had children she had to go to many countries including libya when the dictator muammar gaddafi was ruling there in the middle of all this samsara she lost her connection with swami swami was possibly a distant memory of her happy and fulfilling childhood but you know once we have swami we can never lose connection with him because though we may let go of him he never lets go of us after many many years vijay aunty with her children with family came and settled in the state of goa panaji or panjim the capital city of the state of goa in india she had always been helpful by nature and it was her weakness that she could never say no to anybody who was seeking help from her so when she was in goa when an acquaintance requested her whether she could help in arranging for a puja or a worship at home she gladly agreed and there when she went her jaw just dropped open because right in front of her was a large life sized magnificent photograph of her bhagwan shri satya sai baba swami she said and then she turned to that acquaintance and asked are we going to do worship for swami he said yes do you know swami of course i know swami he has come to our home he has spent time with us and in an instant her whole childhood and life ran through her heart and through her mouth and as everyone listened to her stories they were just dumbstruck and thrilled with this discovery it is not surprising that within a few days they wanted her to take up responsibilities in the satisai organization in goa i am talking about this in the late 1980s or possibly the early 1990s 1991 or 1992 she flatly refused she said no 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 i don't want any of these roles but i would be happy to participate in any of these nagar sankirtan bhajan narayan seva seva activities everything i am going to come back she felt that immense desire to get back she longed to touch the feet of swami she had touched the feet so many times before but now that urge came back i must get a pad namaskar i must touch my swami's feet even as this desire arose in her an opportunity also arose she was told that there would be service or seva at prashantiniliyam in puttaparthi and anybody who volunteered to go as sevadal would get the great opportunity to do so and here came the incentive at the end of that seva of one week swami would walk in between all the volunteers giving them pada namaskar ah she was delighted i have just yearned for the pada namaskar and my swami is already giving me an opportunity yes i will come i will enlist and thus it was that vijay aunty in 1990 or 1991 or possibly 1992 she doesn't remember clearly she found herself for service at puttaparthi she was allotted the canteen seva and she agreed and she was under the charge of a certain mrs sarojamma now mrs sarojamma was an extremely strict lady and those who have worked under her say that you better be extremely disciplined or else and they shudder you know so she was allotted the duty or service of washing the plates in which devotees eat food and on day 1 as she walked to the washing area her whole body trembled and shivered and she felt outraged and she felt disgust oh my god how am i going to wash those dirty plates i i don't do this even at home but but how do i do this oh god oh god and she just kept walking around the place unwilling to dirty her and soil her hands washing away somebody else's eaten and used plates finally she came up on an idea she saw that the end of the line there was somebody who was removing the uh, whatever food particles then somebody would do a preliminary wash somebody would apply soap then another person would do the final wash and then pass on the plate where a couple of ladies were wiping it with a cloth and arranging them back 
she thought i will do that you know wiping with the cloth and arranging them and that was what she did on day 1 and day 2 and in her heart she kept telling swami you have to give me pad namaskar you have to give me namaskar i have come only for that you know i don't care about any of these i care only for namaskar but then a thought arose look at how much service and seva the other women are doing do you think swami will give you pad namaskar only for this much you need to do more you need to do more she had come with this intense desire she had come with her hridaya pushpam for swami those feelings for swami were so intense her desire for pad namaskar was so intense that the next day the third day she moved one level higher in this assembly line she went to the place where the plates were being washed with soap but then she was not satisfied so that evening she went even higher in the assembly line doing the preliminary wash of the plate and finally by the fourth day she was at the head of this assembly line taking away all the food or whatever the remaining grains discarding them and then passing on the plate for the preliminary wash within four days she had evolved from one end of the assembly line to the other end which was the dirty end that was my evolvement stage by stage stage by stage but then she didn't rest at that having offered her hridaya pushpam her feelings now came the time of her offering her deha patram her body she noticed that the area in which all these volunteers were standing and cleaning the plates was itself not so clean so in the night around 9 pm after everybody had completed their seva she went and purchased with her own money this is important to state because back in those days she didn't have sufficient money she was not from a rich family so with her own money she purchased some washing soap and she put that soap all around that area and for one hour sat cleaning the whole area making it sparkling clean the next morning when the volunteers arrived it was to an area that was sparkling clean and fragrant mrs sarojamma was extremely delighted she said you have done such fantastic job you are always top rated vijay aunty felt so happy and decided that not just that one day every session i'm going to do this because this body is for serving swami at the end of which i'm going to get pad namaskar that was how along with her hridaya pushpam she offered even her deha patram now swami was going to take it one notch higher the mano phalam the vancha phalam it's the time to offer the fruits of the action the only desire she had was for pad namaskar right one morning she got to know that there were some spiritual talks that were being delivered and she decided let me go and listen to the speaker today and it so happened that on that very day the speaker spoke about doing actions without any desire for the result and the example that the speaker brought up was too stunning to be a coincidence the speaker said when you come to do seva for example here don't seek pad namaskar from swami no do seva as your offering of love whether he gives pad namaskar or not it doesn't matter now it hit this message hit vijay aunty but in her heart she said swami this person doesn't understand doesn't understand how beautiful those feet are how can i give that up no swami whatever anybody may say i am doing this for your pad namaskar and i need that namaskar day 6 of her seva just one more day of seva to go before that coveted pad namaskar what happens as swami is going for darshan rounds in the gent side somebody who is so keen and so eager to take pad namaskar lunges at swami from a line behind grabs hold of his feet and pulls and to the utter horror of everybody in the darshan ground swami topples over he topples over and falls flat on the devotees who hold him up yes in one sense what bliss what blessing for those devotees to hold aloft the lord but then it led to drastic consequences it was announced 
that henceforth nobody dare touch swami's feet nobody should touch until and unless swami calls and tells take namaskar and then the death blow for vijaya aunty it was announced the same holds true even for the sevadal volunteers even as swami walks amidst them they should just sit not touch his feet Oh, the disappointment! The disappointment was so immense. And on the seventh day, having completed their duties, as they sat in the lines, Swami walked amidst them. Swami passed by inches from Vijaya Aunty, so close, yet so far, because she could not take Padma Namaskar. Tears streamed down her eyes, and that was it. Her father arrived from Bangalore. Mr Wasan by the way I forgot to say was a successful lawyer and he had a court case two days later in Madras so he had to get back to Bangalore and catch a train the Brindavan express to go to Madras and he had come to pick up his wife and daughter so the next day would be their last darshan they had decided they will have the darshan in the morning and leave but before darshan when they decided to go to the canteen and have breakfast who else is there but Saroja aunty, Mrs. Saroja ma comes running towards Vijay aunty and says, Oh, Atma Bandhu, Anatha Rakshaka, you have come. You know, Atma Bandhu means the friend of my soul. Anatha Rakshaka means the protector of the downtrodden. <laughs> and she said, Aunty, Atma Bandhu and Anatha Rakshaka is him. What are you saying? What happened? She says, no, 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 the replacement batch that has come, the replacement batch of volunteers to replace your batch. You know, out of the 15 people, five of them are pregnant. How can they do the seva when they're having a baby in their womb? Oh, and five of them are very elderly. They're 70 plus, 80 plus. How can they do this? And the other four or five of them don't know the language. They have language problems and they don't seem to be interested. I don't know, we are doomed. What do we do? And then Saroja auntie pointed her to the place where all the plates would be kept. There were towers and towers of plates. Then Saroja auntie said, even if today one day this is taken care of, I will ensure that arrangements are made that from tomorrow onward, there is somebody to do this seva. Today, I don't know what are we going to do. And that's when Vijay auntie told both her mother and father, let's delay by one more day. But tomorrow I have to go to the court in Madras. Dad, we can go back tomorrow morning to Bangalore. And you know, you can still catch a train and reach in time for the court. They agreed. And BJ auntie rolled up her sleeves. <laughs> there were no sleeves. But yeah, metaphorically, she rolled up her sleeves. And then she called on her best seva friend. There was a Mrs. Raji. And so Mrs. Raji and Mrs. Vijaya stood there washing plates. They kept washing and cleaning the plates, washing and cleaning the plates. Took a 15 minute break for lunch and continued, continued, continued till 9 p.m. From 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. 12 hours of continuous work at the end of which we both of them had almost collapsed. They were leaning on the sink, they were leaning on the wall and rubbing. But at the end of it, there was a tremendous sense of satisfaction. They reached back home late in the night, just collapsed on the bed and slept. Next day morning, Vijay auntie woke up and it was time to leave. And then she said, Dad, yesterday I couldn't even have darshan. Can we just have one darshan and go? On that day, she gets token number one. She tells, Amma, look at this. I have never got a chance to sit in the front line and here by luck I'm getting token number one. Let's go in. And when they went in and sat in the first line, Vijay auntie later came to know that in her same line was also this Raji auntie. She also came and sat right next to her and they were thrilled. Oh wow, you're also here, you're also here. Wow, both of them in the first line. And she also was going to leave after darshan. Said, Come, let's have a wonderful darshan and then we can leave. So they sat there waiting for the music to begin, which would herald the arrival of the Lord. All the eyes were trained on the interview room door because it is through there that Swami would come out. His residence was on the first floor. But then the door opened and out came Swami walking with great speed. 
the music had not begun. So this is not the official darshan. And Swami seemed to be in a great hurry. Where was he headed to? Swami went straight to M.S. Subalakshmi, a Bharat Ratna and a legendary singer, a great devotee of the Lord. She had arrived and Swami had come to speak to her. And Swami went and spoke to M.S. Subalakshmi and then turned back and with the same speed started walking back towards the interview room door. But then on the way, he suddenly stopped in front of Vijay auntie, turned and spoke to Vijay auntie's mother, Lakshmi Amma, who was sitting beside her. Swami asked, your daughter? Yes, Swami. Oh, America girl. Now Vijay auntie's elder brother was settled in the United States and her mother thought that Swami had possibly got it confused, you know. So she said, no, Swami, she's from Goa. She is not from America. Then Swami said, Even if she forgets, I have not forgotten her. It made no sense to the mother, but it made deep impact on Vijay Aunty. And then Swami looked at her, raised his robe and said, Come, take Namaskar. Ra, Chesko. Vijay auntie got up and went to Swami's feet, bent down and the moment she touched his feet, there was an electric surge of Tremendous joy that went through her and even without realizing, tears began to flow down her cheek onto the lotus feet of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, Vijay auntie had offered her Hridaya Pushpam, the flower of the heartfelt feelings. She had offered her Deha Patram, the leaf of the body. She had even offered and sacrificed her manofalam, the desires of the mind, the desires of the fruits of action. But one thing she was unable to give Swami was Ananda Bhashpam or the water of bliss because she was missing his feet. But the compassion of the Lord is such that having received the fruit, flower and leaf, he gave her that Ananda Bhashpam, that bliss, which she says lasted for several days. She felt she didn't need food, she didn't need rest, she didn't need anything. She would just close her eyes and think of that moment. And then she would go into raptures of bliss. And that is the reason why even when you saw the video, this was recorded years, nearly 32 years after that episode, even now, it elicited the sweet tears of bliss from her eyes. Amma kertai dar, Swami anakka namaskar. Swami romba misi. Unga par heha patta dignitary svandirka. Romba vele irka. And thail bittu, jen saeed kuda hoog lilla hortodur. And that, dear brothers and sisters, is the secret to reconnect or simply connect with Swami through Seva. Because in the process of service, selfless service, where we do everything without expectation of any reward, simply out of love for Swami, we are offering our body, we are offering our mind, we are offering our heart and we will be blessed with tears of joy and an unbreakable connection with Swami. Dear Swami, may the love that we have in our hearts for you keep growing strong and strong every passing moment and may that express itself in total selfless and sacrificing service at your lotus feet. Thank you. Jai Sai Ram.